Hey, what's going on guys? Mangup Sun here, bring you another Division 2 video. Alright, so what can you do to prepare for Title Update 10 that comes out on Tuesday the 16th? Well, I want to go over that with you right now. So first things first is if you have the season pass and you haven't done so already, go ahead and load up your menu and look at these blue dots here. Classified missions, right? Classified missions can be done during that week, they reset every week. They also give you items, collectibles, backpack trophies, but they also give you equipment, right? So I haven't found the location for this one. That's why it just says rewards and what have you, but classified missions are short, they're good, and they double as a fast travel location within the world. So this gives you more places to fast travel to when you need access to areas and you don't necessarily want to go to that mission area right so for example i don't want to go all the way over here to the stronghold if i was to complete this classified mission i now have a fast travel point that's on the other side of the water right so classified missions are one of the things that you're going to need to go ahead and knock out find the locations and get those done next thing is cash stocking or cache stocking however you pronounce that so example here from the season pass from the last global events and the seasonal rewards and all that stuff I started stocking up on my caches and you see here I have more conflict caches than anything because I've gone into conflict lost a lot but you still get rewarded for it you get rewarded for losing and it gives you a piece of equipment there's new equipment that's dropping into division two there's new things that are coming into the division two and you just want to have that accessibility to go ahead and start cracking open cases that could potentially have some god rolls so also if you're part of a clan go ahead and start hoarding those or holding on to that one or two clan caches that you have they drop so many pieces of equipment it's going to be equivalent to what the control points are going to go into with the new title update 10 coming out you need to start going into the dz and getting those dz caches getting that dz currency up and start just getting more used to going into the dark zone even if you're a solo player so even as a solo player go in there sometimes there's not people in there sometimes there is if you come across some toxic people go ahead and take a step out and rethink everything go to another dark zone maybe there won't be as many toxic people in there but just keep going in for the little bits that you can get those dz supply drops and start putting a whole bunch of stuff in your mailbox okay the next thing i want to cover is specializations and specialization field research completion right so if you just recently jumped into the division two you would have had the survivalist sharpshooter and demolitionist already maxed out 165 out of 165 then you would have had the firewall gunner and technician at zero out of 65. you may have wanted to pick one of the classes try it out potentially the firewall where most people go with because it's flame based but you want to go in here and you want to just go ahead and start leveling those up you want to get 165 out of 165 on all of them now in the short time span between now and title update 10 it's not gonna necessarily happen that you can max all three of these out super quick if you haven't been working on them already but the one that you do like to use you can go ahead and completely max that one out 165 out of 165. now if you've already done one of these and you just like to stick to it then i would suggest you go in and start building another one up right so how do you get those points how do you level that up if you go in here and look at your menu invaded missions it won't say it on my screen but it's going to say it on your screen if you haven't maxed out that specialization they give five points per completion now all three of the invaded missions get fives so three invaded missions that's 15 points and then you have the strongholds that also give out five now leveling up your shd watch or your shade level watch this also grants you three specialization points every time you level it up so just by playing the game out there you will get those three shd points per every time you level up therefore increasing your progress on that specialization level up now 
after you've done all that, well, you've knocked out all that stuff. What do you do now? Well, you go in here and you look at your bounties. Bounties, the daily bounties, right? The ones that have the dots beside them, they're gonna reward you with keys, they're gonna reward you with points. Anywhere between three to five points for that specialization as you knock them out. So you have your daily bounties, and then you have your clan bounties, and then you also have your weekly bounties, right? A lot of people just don't do these bounties because they're not as rewarding, right? As you see that I have the difficulty here is hard, gives a little bit of money, and it gives an outcast key and one equipment piece. But for most players, that's not gonna be lucrative enough. But bounties, right, if you knock them all out just to get them done, they are one of the only types of things in the game that actually grant you money after completing an activity. Not a lot of things give you money after an activity besides selling your gear. So you're going to want to go in and knock out your bounties and get the money up and start collecting all that gear and collecting those keys. Now the manhunt, the manhunt still is going on the old manhunt i don't know if it's going to be replaced with a new manhunt come to you 10 when that launches off if you can still do any of that but don't worry about the manhunt too much go ahead and just do the bounty just to do the bounty but you want to go in there if you want to avoid it because it's not dropping any gear go to the other ones get the gear get the money get the experience points keep leveling up that shd watch now crafting is getting a buff the crafting station is getting a little bit of a buff they're going to be dropping better rolls they're going to be giving you better stuff so but don't hold your breath on getting a god roll max roll from the crafting bench that's not what it's used for they don't want it to turn into a god roll machine but anaya ends up selling blueprints all the blueprints that i've acquired i've already purchased from her so you don't see any here but I go into my menu and I look at my level four control points because my world's on heroic. As you can see, if you complete a level four control point, you can get another crafting blueprint. So go out there, do your level four control points, get your crafting blueprints. And you may be thinking, well, I don't want to go out there, do that for crafting blueprints, blah, 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 blah. But weapon handling to get an buff. Everything's getting a buff. You want more options on your weapons than to not have the option to put it on your weapon. In the end, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. But if you don't have the crafting blueprint, how would you even know what it is that you're discarding to the side that you don't even need? So get out there and do your level four control points and start getting your crafting blueprints. Now, once you've completed that, you need to go out there and start farming for green gear sets right go out there and start getting your gear sets up just get it an abundance of them because they're all receiving some type of rework they're getting a little bit of a buff and you want to have the option to be able to see if you like it and see if you want to just put it in your stash or deconstruct it because with the update coming there's going to be so much more that you're going to want to do besides try to go back and rerun old content getting gear sets that you could have been farming for in the first place now at the time of this upload of the video the world targeted loot for this area here in downtown west has targeted loot now targeted loot in the open world is way easier than targeted loot versus a mission right i've done a i've done a control point I've done a mission with the targeted loot, with the gear set. Sometimes it's a little bit like, eh, like the greens just don't drop that way. But, and it takes such a long time to complete the mission versus I can go out there and do the settlement or the control point or the blockade and you know, what have you. And I can go out there and do a public execution that could take a little bit of time, gives me experience points and get that green gear and just go around there and just continue clearing out this map so next i want to talk about vendors vendors are going to be your primary source of selling things right you go to the vendor you sell things most of the time we go out there we pick up stuff we don't need we either deconstruct it in the field and we don't bring it back here but what i want to say is that title update 10 coming out you're going to need a lot of money because when the vendors get updated 
They're going to take away all this purple stuff. They're going to take away the low drops and everything. And everything's going to be high end. High end sand, the gold gear. So the gold gear is going to be there. And they're going to increase the price of things. Already, the gear here is lackluster. But it's also quite expensive in its own right. $6,175 for this shitty chess piece right so they're going to make it better the price is going to increase could be upwards to eight thousand dollars for one piece of gear from here and it's going to be really tempting to get it but then you're going to be like well i don't have any money well how do i make money you make small gains on money when you sell your gear you're only selling it for three hundred dollars a pop you know sometimes upwards to 500 depending on what the gear piece is and what have you but selling your gear doesn't make you the most money doing bounties makes you the most money at one time as you can see let's go back to the bounty screen we'll go to a basic bounty and then we'll just look at it i get ten thousand dollars just to complete this hard mission which would take me five seven minutes maybe that's including travel time so it's not that hard to make money in the game. You just got to know where to go find it. But at the same time, you could also go in for your targeted loot, right? Look for the targeted loot for skill attachments. The skill attachments are a really good farming method for selling those things because there's so many of them, right? Any one of you guys out there could probably go inside your inventory screen and see that you have upwards to maybe... 23 or 100 whatever type of mods that are just sitting here in your mod inventory slot and you're not using them that's because they're mediocre at best so go out there run that mission once to like two three times just pick up a whole bunch of those mods pick them up as junk and then just come back here and sell them the reason why you want to sell them is because they always stay at a flat rate of 271 dollars that's consistent across the board so as I say that I see a 272 but 271 is gonna be about the base where you're gonna be selling these mods at so $200 a pop that you sell them for and that's gonna give you peace of mind on selling those mods so it's versus you picking up the gun you're like I don't know if this is gonna be good I don't know if this gear piece is gonna be good should I hold on to it and then we end up looking like this in our stash with almost 300 and a max inventory so selling those mods will just give you peace of mind over selling weapons now when you start getting an abundance of gear that you don't need right if we go in here and look at the targeted loot and we start farming for the open world and we start getting a whole bunch of trash items then I would say yes you can go back and sell them but what I would recommend is you go in and you deconstruct them and when you deconstruct them, you start getting the pieces for the other brand sets in the game, right? You can only get y'all in the dark zone. So that's why I don't have that many. I don't go in the dark zone too often. But if you get other pieces of brand sets, so go ahead and start breaking them down. Because again, the crafting bench is going to be getting an update. And you may see something in there that you like. And then going into the crafting bench itself if we look at the mask the chest piece what whatever have you right there still could be stuff here that you have locked and you can only get those from doing level three or higher control points so level three control points are challenging level four is heroic so running the heroic one is going to get you better gear better stuff to sell but running level three at challenging is going to be beneficial to you as well so you want to go ahead and get these get all this knocked out because yes our recalibration library may end up getting full and we may be looking good on stats and stuff but it's the crafting bench that's the thing that's just been left in the past when it comes to building up our characters so go out there and do that so while you're out there leveling up and getting all that gear and doing that targeted farm and getting those skill mods to sell and, and all that jazz, the next thing you want to do is to start hoarding your SHD points because ceramics are a really big deal when it comes to re-rolling gear. 
Rerolling gear takes upwards to 69 parts, if I'm not mistaken. So, if I try to reroll a piece of gear, it's going to take 69 ceramics to reroll this piece of gear. Now, like I said, there's going to be so much new loot in the game, and you're going to want to reroll stuff and try out builds. You're going to run out of ceramics extremely fast. Why? Because ceramics only drop primarily from the outcasts. And we don't run too many outcast missions. So, mainly our top missions that we do do are Black Tusk, True Sons, we've been farming hyenas, you know, we get a whole lot of that other stuff, but we don't really run Manning National Zoo if you don't really need to. We're not coming over here to the Federal Emergency Bunker to get anything. So, especially with the targeted loot system being the way it is, yeah, I could target the LMG here, try to get the god roll lmg of some sort but then i mean what are we really doing all right so after you've done all that and you went out into the world and you're doing all that stuff so you want to come back and you want to go back to basics you want to start building a base build and you want to start figuring out what you want to do and how you want to play so you need an identity you need to be flexible and you know building different variants of your type of build so in this in this case let's go over to my tactician build my hardwire build the hardwire build is primarily a healer build but when I want to double down on healing you know I have another variant of that which does different things to help out the team so if I'm gonna double down on healing I'm gonna go and use my buddy helper build but if I want to go more into a status effect healer build for self-healing, I'm going to go into this other build here. So that's three different variants of my most favorite played loadout. Now, if you're a DPS player, maybe you want a little bit of CC going. If you're a tank player, maybe you want a little bit more status effects to keep the enemies from attacking you. Or you want to go out there and double down on refocusing on getting... A shield build going and there's plenty of shield builds out there so when you want to think about doing these different variants of these builds it mainly comes into the right type of thinking of I do like this base but what could I change to make it better what could I change to make it different than what I already have equipped could I push this to another level or can I improve on it in some sort of way? So one of the questions you may be asking yourself is, am I too far behind to do any of this? I still have Warlords of New York to complete. The manhunt thing popped up. Like, I don't have all this gear and I don't have a clan and I'm just on normal difficulty. Just don't trip, just breathe. So everything that I'm saying, you can do at a normal difficulty level. But if you're already playing normal, I suggest going over into hard difficulty and start working your way up the ladder in changing your world. Now, most people don't know for some reason, maybe it's just because they haven't been playing the game as long, but you can actually come into your world map here, push right on the directional pad, and then change your world difficulty. And this will augment what the NPCs the health and the aggressiveness and all that going on in the world for that and that's going to affect your loot drops so you can also include directives but one step at a time if you're not at that level yet then don't go into directives just work on getting your difficulty up whenever you feel comfortable at that level go to the next when you feel comfortable you go to the next but if you're below challenging work your way up to challenging because heroic is going to be the new challenging and then you're going to be in a good spot when tu10 comes out if you're already sitting at that high level content the name of the game here is to go out there and kill shit, and you might as well be doing it with a purpose right and that's why i say go out there and do the targeted farm do the mod hoarding do the SHD hoarding and then build up that SHD watch points so you can have 
enough ceramics sitting on standby to where you can just come in here and purchase ceramics at your leisure. You're going to be doing a lot of stuff in the division. You might as well be rewarded for your time. Another question that's popularly asked probably to yourself or by your other teammates that may be playing the game is that, hey, man, we should go out there and we should go farm exotics. Let's go farm exotics. Why? Why go out there and farm exotics? Why go out there and put yourself in a place that has a really low drop chance? Your world may not be at that level yet for the okay drop chances, which is heroic to get it from like every activity. And you don't want to end up putting a heavy burden on yourself to try and get something that may not even drop. So then you become frustrated. You keep running the same missions over and over again with no reward. And then you experience burnout. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to burn out on the game. We want to continue to have fun. Exotic farming is a bit of a drag when it comes down to it. So just continue playing the game. If you get an exotic, you get an exotic. The more people you run with, the more chances that you have to drop an exotic across all the guys. And if you have good teammates, they'll call it out and say, hey, I ended up getting Sawyer's knee pads. Do you need those? So with everything else I'm told in this video, one of the main goals you should be thinking of getting to is getting to that challenging difficulty. I can't stress it enough that the challenging difficulty is going to be the sweet spot to where you want to land at when it comes to playing in-game content because once the new update comes out and we get our weapon buffs and the NPCs get their little bit of buffs and everything starts to get more worked into the player's favor of having fun, you're going to want to jump to heroic because it's going to be the new challenging. It's going to be that easy. It's already kind of easy now once you get a good build going, but heroic by far still isn't as easy as challenging. You want to always continue to push yourself to the next level when it comes to these types of games because in the end, most of the better content, most of the rewards are going to come from the higher difficulty of content. If anybody out there has ever played Diablo 3, Warframe, or Warhammer, you know that you want to keep increasing the world difficulty because your drop chance is going to get better and better and better. Now, for those who are already at that heroic difficulty, right, then I suggest that you go to your level 4 control points again, go out there, finish them, and get your crafting blueprints. I can't stress that enough. Go ahead and increase that crafting library with Anaya right because there are so many crafting blueprints there's so many modifications and there's so much pieces of gear out there i doubt that you have them all i really doubt it so that's something else for you to do in the world and there's so many control points there's at least three to four control points per area so there's not a drought when it comes to the content surrounded by control points now for those top-notch agents out there who have everything in the game and have all the blueprints and they just have everything in the kitchen sink, then what I ask of you is to go out there and answer the call. Go out there, answer the call, go ahead and load up the matchmaking for a backup request or matchmake for a random activity or go into the dark zone to find other people to play with. Use the matchmaking because the matchmaking out there it's just underused and for in-game content players answering the call is going to be one of the most helpful things you can do for your fellow agent there are those out there that need you so go lend a hand and that's going to do it for the video i hope you guys liked it hope it was informative and helpful please like share and subscribe but all good things must come to an end and i'll see you in the next one Thank <laughs> you.